I have Dr. Jitendra Singh, Minister of State, not just in the Prime Minister's office, but Science and Technology, who joins me on this special broadcast. Dr. Jitendra Singh, describe to our viewers what you feel at this moment and your interactions with scientists as this very complex and difficult operation gets underway, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you for getting me there. We, all of us are ex excited. I can see you also there. I think uh, my first thought is it's absolutely mesmerizing. India today joins the select league of nations, becoming the fourth nation in the world to enter into the space docking technology capability. And uh, I think what is even more noteworthy is that it has been achieved through a purely, purely indigenously developed technology. The mission is absolutely indigenous and has been appropriately called Bharatiya Docking System. And to that extent, it also lives up to the national priorities laid down by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the Atam Nirbhar Bharat. And I think this also paves the way for another mantra given by him, that of Vixit Bharat, because this is going to pave the way for several futuristic technologies which are lined up in the years to come, like Kanganyan, the Harpy Antrik Station. And personally for me, I think, uh, as you rightly said in the beginning, I'm privileged to be associated with the Department of Space, which is, you know, achieving global wonders one after the other. Sir, this is truly a global wonder, considering we'll only be the fourth country in the world to do it. But, uh, sir, one, doing it completely indigenously, the faith that that has been put in our scientists and the faith that they are living up to. Please describe, sir, the complexities that are involved in such a complex operation of having two satellites link up in space yes. and transfer electricity and why this is so significant for a future manned mission, yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, Gaurav. It's very, very interesting, very fascinating, also uh, quite romantic to an extent. And before that, now that you've uh, asked me that, I think uh, I should bring it to the to the notice of the viewers that our ISRO was established in the year 1969, which is the year which has gone down in the history when the first human being landed on the surface of moon, Neil Armstrong, yes, through that Apollo 8 American mission. But today, today we are first to have landed on the southern pool of moon. So such a long journey covered in such a short time. When we are able to offer fuels to those who are much ahead of us, in spite of the fact that we started our space journey much, much later, which means that our space experts, our space scientists had the human, had the potential, had the capacity to put in hard work. They were committed, they had the passion, but possibly they didn't have that enabling milieu which comes from the level of the policy maker, which happened after 2014. And you will see, one after the other, today India is in a position to be reckoned with as far as space technology is concerned. Now, this space docking technology will not only help us to gather inputs and also gather experience for a number of our future uh, missions, uh, which of course include the Gaganyam, the Bharti Antariksha Station, and uh, it will also give us uh, some kind of a geopolitical edge or maybe a geopolitical position. So, India, I think today, truly has, uh, has, has heralded the journey uh, to the destination of Exit Bharat. Sir, this is a very, very important milestone. Uh, it's already at Absolutely. 417 uh, kilometers and 470 kilometers uh, from, from Earth. Is the... The when, when, uh, sorry, Gaurav, when you talk about the complexity, you see how precisely our, 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 our scientists, our, our, our friends in the ISRO work day and night from uh, a speed of nearly 3,000, 4,000 kilometers is going to get reduced to just about 0.36 kilometers, you know, in yes, course of time, in a few days, maybe uh, that is scheduled to be around 6th of uh, January, when they come close to each other and then actually merge, you know, in the layman's language. It will be a merger of two satellites, which will, uh, maybe tomorrow you could have one astronaut walking from one vehicle into the other, or a transfer of certain uh, important uh, material, including batteries, etc., uh, which will be useful not only in the transfer of uh, several input technologies or carry home messages, but also from the point of view of uh, the, the uh, astronaut's uh, biological, you know, milieu at that time and his physiological conditions at that time. In more ways than one, we have actually 
I would say, uh, broke the ceiling down. Amazing. And this is such a beautiful cracking of, of that ceiling, uh, of that glass ceiling that you speak of. But Dr. Jitendra Singh, as Minister of Science and Technology uh, and Space, sir, please explain to our viewers the, the various milestones that the Narendra Modi government, uh, you know, intends to achieve in terms of uh, a manned mission to space, our own space station and our own, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gaganyaan uh, and, and the yatris that we, that we want uh, uh, in, in space, sir. Explain, in, explain that to us, sir. No, I'm glad, I'm glad, Gaurav, you gave me an opportunity to say that. I think if you ask me about the important missions that are lined up, of course, this is the last mission of the year. In 2025, January, we are looking forward to NAVIC 2, which is the navigation with India constellation. Again, a mission which has started in this uh, last one decade uh, during the Modi government. In 2025, uh, we would have the last uh, dress rehearsal for Gaganyan with a female robo, which will be a biometric Gaganyan. And uh, in uh, 2025 itself, we will have a U.S. satellite for mobile uh, communication 2025, uh, we are going to have a very important nicer mission, which is uh, in collaboration with uh, NASA. It's called actually NASA ISRO Synthetic Aperture Radar, which gives you a full Earth picture every 12 days up to as much as uh, one centimeter accuracy. So we are then, you know, going to partner with NASA. Or you can say NASA is going to partner with us. And that's the reason when Prime Minister Modi was there in Washington. The, the U.S. government solicited Indian astronauts to accompany them to the International Space Station. And then, if not by the end of 2025, in the beginning of 2026, we will have Gaganyaan, the first Indian human mission. Of course, we had an Indian astronaut in space in the yes. form of Rakesh Sharma in the early 1980s, but that was a Soviet mission. So again, this will be totally uh, an, an indigenous mission. We already have uh, four astronauts identified for that. 2027, we'll have Chandra 4, Chandra 4. 2028, we'll have uh, Venus mission. 2035, India's own space station called Bharti Antarik Station. And on 2040, in 2040, we'll have an Indian laying his foot on the surface of moon. So it's going to be that kind of an eternity, that kind of a chronology. And uh, since you've given me this opportunity, I think some the viewers will be fascinated to know that today we are launching is not only Indian satellites, but we are launching a large number of, or maybe more number of uh, satellites from uh, U.S. and Europe, the European Space Agency. And we are all, also generating revenue to add to the space economy of India and making India's space economy an important component of the global space economy. You would be glad to know that in the last few years, uh, we have... Uh, earned as much as uh, 292 million euros wow. and uh, as much as 172 million US dollars simply by launching the American satellite and the European satellite. So you can understand where we started from. We started off late, but we have had a quantum leap in the last one decade. So that's what uh, makes it very fascinating. It makes it a huge, huge success story.